<laughs> so next up is um, Hobson Lane. Um, we have um, artificial neural nets for predicting weather using PyBrain. Indeed. So my name is Hobson Lane. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Um, this is part of a project for, for Sharp Labs. We were uh, developing neural nets to predict the power consumption in buildings. Um, but this little demonstration here, we will use it to predict um, the weather in Portland, Oregon, where it's notoriously difficult to predict. If I can get the slides to go, here we go. So um, neural nets, as uh, Melanie Warwick described to us, involve taking a bunch of inputs, uh, whatever your features are, um, generally numeric, and then multiplying them by some weights and combining them together and summing those, those multiplied values. The, this is what, so it's basically just linear algebra. Take a big matrix, multiply it by a bunch of other numbers and a vector, and spit out another number. This is what those matrices look like on the inside after you've trained them. They tend to build up some sort of a structure. Um, this is a heat map, so white is very large, maximum value. Black is a very uh, low value. You can see here the interesting bit is that there's a couple, couple values that are red, which means they're in the middle, which means they're close to zero, which means you might be able to get rid of those uh, neurons. This, had, this, this particular network had six neurons, so there are six possible output uh, weights that are used to multiply by those coming out of the big matrix. And so, so the, you could eliminate those two, reduce it to four, and see what happens. And you might get a, a better result, more general result. Uh, typically when you have too many neurons, you overfit. In this case, um, I've built up, uh, on the open source side, I've built up a, a, a set of helpers for PyBrain to make this a lot easier. So you can take your pandas data frame, just tell it what, uh, what columns you want to use as your inputs and what column you're trying to fit to as your output, and it'll train to it, and, it'll, and you give it as the number of neurons you want, and away you go. Um, this is for the Python user group, so we call it PUG in, in Portland, Oregon. And uh, so this, is, um, this it also has data, which you can use to do all sorts of machine learning experiments on. And so that's how you'd, um, you'd import that library and get a data, data frame of weather from, from Portland, Oregon. Then for, um, uh, so this is, this is what this library does. Um, it just, it's, it's, it sets up an input layer. Um, it adds, it, it does all the, the little, the details in PyBrain that you have to do to make all the connections and make sure they're connected. Because if you, if you miss one, you'll end up with, a, if you end up with a broken, a broken wire, and of course that doesn't give you your answer. So, um, so this just goes through all those steps properly for you. And then, um, and then if you want to create a data set, that's another tricky element that PyBrain does a really awesome job of. It takes your, it, it, it automatically divides up your data set into training set and uh, test set or validation set. So you don't have to worry about it. You just tell it how much of your data you want to use for each and away it goes. But in order to turn a data frame into a data set, you need another helper function and that's what this does. So um, this is the results for, I just, just did this about five minutes ago, uh, trying to predict the, the weather in Portland, Oregon. Um, so it looks pretty good at this scale. Um, this was after uh, about 500 epochs, they call it in PyBrain, 500 attempts at back propagation in order to try to converge to a solution. Well, um, that looks great at this scale. So at least it's getting sort of, uh, uh, and, and ignore the temperature F. Um, I did this in, from here in Canada and it actually, the data came across as for somehow weather underground knew I was in Canada and it gave me um, temperatures in degrees C. So these are degrees C, I think. Um, and these are, this is over multiple years. Each one of these is a day. So this is over the past two years. Um, so if you zoom in on it, you see it's not quite so great. So I've still got some work to do on uh, tuning this neural net. Um, like I said, one of the ways to go about that is to eliminate some neurons or add new inputs to, to the data set. Currently the inputs were um, just the min and max temperature for the previous three days and also the, the uh, pressure because I, I, I see weather people all the time talking about the pressure maps and so I figured that would be a good thing for this brain to use as its input. But, um, but there, apparently there's, there needs to be some more inputs. Um, some ideas there might be neighboring cities, for instance, that, that, uh, that particularly cities whose weather precedes the weather in the, in the target city. So that's what I have. Um, this is a great, a great library. I'd love your contributions. I'd love to get pull requests. I'd be happy to, to incorporate them. And feel free to use it and apply it to whatever problems you have for neural nets. Awesome. Thank you.